Hello, <coughs> welcome to this week's video. Um, I thought I would go over uh, and carry on with. Um, I did a video beginning on the chapter from Bhagavad Gita on devotional service. So I was just going to carry on with those verses that followed that one that I already explained the um, first. Uh, the first verse that I covered from the um, starting from um, so it's chapter 12 text 8 and the verse was just fix your mind upon me the supreme personality of Godhead and engage all your intelligence in me thus you will live in me always without a doubt and then we're just going to have a look at the verses that follow that verse and um, look at um, a kind of reverse process that's presented um, in terms of um, if not being able to do the first instruction uh, entirely then other recommendations that happen as I sort of explained in the other video so we'll just start by doing some chanting <coughs> I hope you're having a good day or evening Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Jai Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadara, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, so following that um, verse. So text 8 is, just fix your mind upon me, the supreme personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me, thus you will live in me always without a doubt. And I sort of explain some different meditation methods that you can use um, 
in order to work in focusing the mind and fixing the mind on God, um, namely the root jhan meditation and chanting as a means and also um, sort of a, a form of increasing remembrance, um, constant remembrance of God whilst doing work and stuff like that. Um, if you remember or if you haven't watched that video it's called devotional service. Um, so the next verse is sort of, I'll read it and then I'll read the purport and um, we'll look at sort of what the story is there. But this is the next verse. So text 9, um, chapter 12. My dear Arjuna, O winner of wealth, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulated principles of Bhakti Yoga. In this way you will develop a desire to attain to me. Um, so this is the purport for that verse. In this verse by uh, Prabhupada, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, in this verse two different processes of Bhakti Yoga are indicated. The first applies to one who has actually developed an attachment for Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by transcendental love. And the other is for one who has not developed an attachment for the Supreme Person by transcendental love. For the second class there are different prescribed rules and regulations which one can follow to be ultimately elevated to the stage of attachment to Krishna. Bhakti Yoga is the purification of the senses. At the present moment in material existence the senses are always impure, being engaged in sense gratification. But by the practice of Bhakti Yoga these senses can become purified and in the purified state they come directly in contact with the Supreme Lord. In this material existence I may be engaged in some service to some master, but I don't really lovingly serve my master, I simply serve to get some money. And the master also is not in love, he takes service from me and pays me, so, so there is no question of love. But for spiritual life one must be elevated to the pure stage of love. That stage of love can be achieved by practice of devotional service performed with the present senses. This love of God is now in a dormant state in everyone's heart, and there love of God is manifest in different ways, but it is contaminated by the material association. Now the material association has to be purified, and that dormant natural love for Krishna has to be revived. That is the whole process. To practice the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga, one should, under the guidance of an expert spiritual master, follow certain principles. One should rise early in the morning, take bath, enter the temple, and offer prayers and chant Hare Krishna, then collect flowers to offer to the deity, cook foodstuffs to offer to the deity, take prasadam, and so on. There are various rules and regulations which one should follow, and one should constantly hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam from pure devotees. This practice can help anyone to rise to the level of love of God, and then he is sure of his progress into the spiritual kingdom of God. This practice of Bhakti Yoga under the rules and regulations, with the direction of a spiritual master, will surely bring one to the stage of love of God. So, that this is the next recommendation of Krishna. So if you follow, first he said to fix your mind. He said to fix your mind and engage your intelligence in him. And then he says if you are unable to do that, if you can't fix your mind without deviation, then follow the regulated principles of Bhakti Yoga. And then the regulated principles that are recommended here are firstly to uh, under the guidance of a spiritual master, so um, so basically, if you're not aware, there is the, there is that the Hare Krishna movement is um, like a worldwide sort of program. There's a thing called uh, ISKCON or the International Society of Krishna Consciousness, and within that system, there's different centers uh, in various towns around the world. Um, hopefully you have one in your area. Maybe maybe you already, maybe this is old news, but I should go over it because this is pretty much what, you're gonna, what you have to do to follow 
the second verse is you would want to find a program where the Hare Krishna is going and they'll they'll be having like a feast of prasadam um some chanting and then like some philosophy and stuff and um basically you just start to associate with the devotees there and get involved and um eventually th through that association you should come in contact with different various spiritual masters that are available um uh, finding a spiritual master is sort of something um, I think it's quite um, personal it's um, essentially the um, the spiritual master has to be has to be in control of his senses the in the nectar of devotion um, nectar of instruction the um, uh, oh, where is it? Basically, oh, here we go. So, this is a spiritual master. See, it says, a sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger, and the urges of the tongue belly and genitals is qualified to make disciples all over the world so that's the standard of what the spiritual master should be namely controlling the urge to speak controlling the mind's demands um, the actions of anger so free from anger and the urges of the tongue so he's controlling his senses um, belly and genitals so basically in in control like a um, a yogi in other words like a bhakti yogi and um, qualified to make disciples all over the world so there are um, lots of gurus out there um, in one of the lectures by one of Kripalji's um, disciples he explains that the only way that you can actually find a guru is by the mercy of the Lord. So actually, um, mercy comes first. So first, there is a a desire for to approach God or whatever, and then and then in that um, desire, then the Lord will lead you to a spiritual master. Um, so it happens by mercy. Um, essentially, in the regulated principles, um, to practice the regulated principles, so you need a spiritual master um, to give you guidance. And then there's books like um, Nectar of Devotion, sort of will explain lots of um, regulated principles. Essentially, there's like this will probably I don't know yeah this is um, there's 64 um, 64 principles that one should follow to practice regulated devotional service. Um, um so this is what it is and the next verse covers what you can do if you can't do this so this gives you an idea so these I'll just read the bold ones first um so the first one is oh is it right oh here we go yeah here we go um i'll just read this 
Sri Rupa Goswami states that his elder brother, Sanatan Goswami, has compiled Hari Bhakta Vilas for the guidance of the Vaishnavas, and therein has mentioned many rules and regulations to be followed by the Vaishnavas. Some of them are very important and prominent, and Srila Rupa Goswami will now mention these very important items for our benefit. The main purport of this statement is that Srila Rupa Goswami pr- proposes to mention only basic principles, not details. For example, a basic principle is that one has to accept a spiritual master. Exactly how one follows the instructions of a spiritual master is considered a detail. For example, if one is following the instruction of a spiritual master, and that instruction is different from the instructions of another spiritual master, this is called detailed information. The basic principle of acceptance of a spiritual master is good everywhere, although the details may be different. Srila Rupa Goswami does not wish to enter into details here, but wants to place before us only the principles. He mentions the basic principles as follows. So here's, this will uh, give you an idea of regulated devotional service. So the principles are as follows. 1. Accepting the shelter of the lotus feet of a bona fide spiritual master. 2. Becoming initiated by the spiritual master and learning how to discharge devotional service from him. 3. Obeying the orders of the spiritual master with faith and devotion. 4. Following in the footsteps of the great Acharya's teachers under the direction of the spiritual master. 5. Inquiring from the spiritual master how to advance in Krishna consciousness. 6. Being prepared to give up anything material for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. This means that when we are engaged in the devotional service of Krishna, we must be prepared to give up something which we may not like to give up, and also we have to accept something which we may not like to accept. 7. <coughs> Residing in a sacred place of pilgrimage like Dwaraka or Vrindavan, 8. Accepting only what is necessary, or dealing with the material world only as far as necessary. 9. Observing the fasting day on a kodashi, and 10. Worshipping sacred trees like the banyan tree. These 10 items are preliminary necessities for beginning the discharge of devotional service and regulative principles. In the beginning, if a neophyte devotee observes the above-mentioned 10 principles, surely he will make a good advancement make good advancement in Krishna consciousness. The next set of instructions is listed as follows. 1. One should rigidly give up the company of non-devotees. 2. One should not instruct a person who is not desirous of accepting devotional service. 3. One should not be very enthusiastic about constructing costly temples or monasteries. 4. One should not try to read too many books, nor should one develop the idea of earning his livelihood by lecturing on or professionally reciting Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita. 5. One should not be neglectful in ordinary dealings. 6. One should not be under the spell of lamentation and loss or jubilation and gain. 7. One should not disrespect the demigods. 8. One should not give unnecessary trouble to any living entity. 9. One should carefully avoid the various offences in chanting the holy name of the Lord, or in worshipping the deity in the temple. 10. One should be very tolerant toward, intolerant toward the blasphemy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or his devotees. <coughs> uh, without following the above-mentioned ten principles, one cannot properly elevate himself to the platform of sadhana bhakti, or devotional service in practice. Altogether, Srila Rupa Goswami mentions twenty items, and all of them are very important. Out of the twenty, the first three, namely accepting the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, taking initiation from him and serving him with respect and reverence, are the most important. The next important items are as follows. So, There's 64 things in total. I don't want to go into it too much because I'm also doing this partly as a type of introductory sort of thing and I think it will just be too much information if I go through all of them. But essentially there's... um, there's various principles that you follow to practice regulated devotional service and the best way to get into that if you're if you can't 
if you're not already attached to God in love, um, this is the recommendation is to cultivate that love by getting to the stage where you can practice sadhana bhakti. So um, this is the order that it's presented in in, in Bhagavad Gita. It's, that's the first instruction and the second is if you can't if you can't um, fix your mind and intelligence then practice regulated but devotional service and <coughs> um, there are other there are other um, centers and things I mean it, there's not just ISKCON there's also um, one that Kripalji um, Maharaj Shagad Guru Kripalji Maharaj is set up and there's probably centers and things available that you can get into um, bhakti through that as well or there might be other things around <coughs> there's various um, it's just a matter of finding one that's in your local area but it's probably useful to find some kind of association so that you can um, get into the culture a little bit and understand a bit more about what's going on if you haven't already um, um yeah, so that's regulated devotional service. The next instruction if you can't do that, uh, um Krishna says, um text ten says of chapter twelve, if you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga, then just try to work for me, because by working for me you will come to the perfect stage. So okay, I'll read the purport. One who is not able even to practice the regulative principles of bhakti yoga under the guidance of a spiritual master can still be drawn to this perfectional stage by working for the Supreme Lord. How to do this work has already been explained in the 55th verse of the 11th chapter. So I'll look that up. Fifty-fifth verse. Uh, okay. Okay, so it must be the purport. I'll read the purport for the fifty-fifth verse. Anyone who wants to approach the supreme of all the personalities of Godhead on the Krishna Loka planet in the spiritual sky and be intimately connected with the supreme personality Krishna must take this formula as stated by the supreme himself. Therefore this verse is considered to be the essence of Bhagavad Gita. The verse is, my dear, my dear Arjuna, one who is engaged in my pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of previous activities and from mental speculation, who is friendly to every living being certainly comes to me. So therefore this verse is considered to be the essence of Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is a book directed to the conditioned souls who are engaged in the material world with the purpose of lording it over nature and who do not know the real spiritual life. The Bhagavad Gita is meant to show how one can understand his spiritual existence and his eternal relationship with the Supreme Spiritual Personality and to teach one how to go back home, back to Godhead. Now here is the verse which clearly explains the process by which one can attain success in a spiritual activity. Devotional service. As far as work is concerned, one should transfer, so this is on the work, as far as work is concerned, one should transfer his energy entirely to Krishna conscious activities. No work should be done by any man except in relationship to Krishna. This is called Krishna karma. One may be engaged in so karma is in action. One may be engaged in various activities, but one should not be attached to the result of his work. But the result should be done for him. For him, for him, for Krishna. One example, one may be engaged in business, but to transform that activity into Krishna consciousness, one has to do business for Krishna. 
If Krishna is the proprietor of the business, then Krishna should enjoy the profit of the business. If a businessman is in possession of thousands and thousands of dollars, and if he, and if he has to offer all this to Krishna, he can do it. This is work for Krishna. Instead of constructing a big building for his sense gratification, this is quite long, he can construct a nice temple for Krishna, and he can install the deity of Krishna and arrange for the deity's service, as is outlined in the authorized books of devotional service. This is all Krishna karma. One should not be attached to the result of his work, but the result should be offered to Krishna. One should also accept prasadam, food, the remnants of offerings to Krishna. If, however, one is not able to construct a temple for Krishna, one can engage himself in cleansing the temple of Krishna. That is also Krishna karma. One can cultivate a garden. Anyone who has land, in India at least, any poor man has a certain amount of land, can utilize that for Krishna by growing flowers to offer him. He can sow Tulsi plants because Tulsi leaves are very important, and Krishna has recommended this in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna desires that one offer him a leaf or a flower or a little water, and he is satisfied. This leaf especially refers to the Tulsi. So one can sow Tulsi leaves and pour water on the plant. Thus, even the poorest man can engage in the service of Krishna. There are some of the examples of how one can engage in working for Krishna. So, that's... Maybe that could be it. I'll carry on. The word mat paramaha refers to one who considers the association of Krishna in his supreme abode to be the highest perfection of life. Such a person does not wish to be elevated to the higher planets such as the moon or the sun or heavenly planets, or even the highest planet of this universe, Brahmaloka. He has no attraction for that. He is only attracted to being transferred to the spiritual sky, and even in the spiritual sky he is not satisfied with merging into the glowing blood. Brahma Jyoti effulgence, for he wants to enter the highest spiritual planet, namely Krishna Loka, Goloka Vrindavan. He has full knowledge of that planet, and therefore he is not interested in any other. As indicated by the word Mad Bhaktaha, he fully engages in devotional service, specifically in the nine processes of devotional engagement hearing, chanting, remembering, worshipping, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering prayers, carrying out the orders of the Lord, making friends with Him, and surrendering everything to Him. One can engage in all nine pro devotional processes, or eight or seven, or at least in one, and that will surely make one perfect. The term Sangha Vrad. Vajjitaha is very significant. One should associate himself with persons who are one should disassociate himself from persons who are against Krishna. Not only are the atheistic persons against Krishna, but also those who are attached to fraud of activities and mental speculation. Therefore the pure form of devotional service is described in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu as follows. That's the book I was just reading before. Anya Balasata Sunyam Jnana Kamadye Anavritam Anukulina Krishnanu Silanam Bhaktir Uttama in this verse, Srila Rupa Goswami clearly states that if anyone wants to execute unalloyed devotional service, he must be freed from all kinds of material association. So um so essentially, yeah, working working for Krishna. So if you can't um, practice the regulative principles, then what you can do is you could take one of those examples there of growing food or something like that, um, or or basically you can. People get a little bit freaked out when you start talking about donations and stuff because people sometimes they um, they don't they want to make sure that the money's going um, like going to be used properly and stuff. So I mean that's basically up to you. Um, what's if you if you can the essentially the most important thing is to give the money to a spiritual cause 
and to try and make sure that that spiritual cause is bona fide, that it's actually transmitting the the bona fide message of Krishna. Um, um, so, and hopefully you can figure something out like that. Ascent <coughs> but it's kind of a personal thing because you're, if you're working and then you're giving your money to some donation, that's, um, you know, that's a personal thing between you and God, and that's why you've done it. That's why this is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita as being one of the things that you can do. Um, you know, if you can't go through all these rules and everything, you can just keep working, but you just start offering some money and in that way it'll free you from um, the way that you're working, it'll actually change the way that you work because that's what the goal of it is, is that if you're giving your the fruits of your labor away then you begin to feel like you're actually working for God in your work and in that way you can be elevated into devotional service because that's pretty close to devotional service um, doing doing a work and knowing that that is for God obviously that's going right back to the original one that I mentioned when you are working and you are fixing remembering God so so you can get elevated by this process of just offering your money but you obviously want to be um, personal about how you do that um, you know but um so, yeah, if you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga, then just try to work for me, because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. So, that's that's three, we went through three things, is that first instruction of attachment, and then you've got regulative principles, um, which involves finding a spiritual master, associating with devotees, etc. And failing that, you can just sort of... There are, I think there's even more. There's a couple more things as well, so this, this isn't the end of the road or anything, but um, if you can't do devotional service, the next one back from that would be working, and then um, with the way that you use the money that you make from the work as a way of actually starting to elevate your consciousness within that work. Um, so, yeah, but this has um, gone on for quite a while now, so I'll just do a little bit of chanting and then um, I might come back and do the rest of them. I hope I hope you got something out of that. It's quite a long video, so... Yeah, if you if you didn't watch the first one, it could be a good idea to watch that first um, video from the same chapter, which was called Devotional Service. So you just have to click on my channel and go and find it in there, or or I might put this in a playlist as well. Okay. So I'll come back. Um, I'll make the next video on the following verses as well. So, yeah, so we'll just end with some chanting. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada Srivasani, Gora Bhakta Vrinda. Thank you.